morning. So welcome everybody this morning. We have a, a few that are still coming in. We can just go ahead and, if our ushers can go ahead and, and have everyone go ahead and come in so we can go ahead and start this morning. You guys look beautiful and handsome this morning. Amen. We're, we're excited to be in the house of the Lord. There's no other place I'd rather be but be in the house of the Lord. You know, I text D this, this um, over the holiday, and uh, I remember thinking, I just can't wait. I just want to get in God's presence. Now, of course, we can get in His presence at home, and, and we should. We should be in, in, in the presence of the Lord throughout the day. But there's just something special when you come together in unity. And we know the Bible speaks of that. And it's just wonderful to be with our, our brothers and our sisters in Christ and just to be able to worship the Lord together in, in corporate praise. It says we're to enter into his, his courts with thanksgiving, his house with praise, and we're to come in with his joyful shouts. We're excited to be in the house of the Lord. So we just want to welcome everybody this morning. Hope you had a wonderful holiday. You know, this morning, we're going to open up with prayer, but this morning as we were in prayer and um, doing our intercessory prayer before church like we do, the Lord always, he drops a theme in our heart, doesn't he? He always gives us a theme of, of the, you know, God is a God of order and he's a God of structure. And, and, and he always lets us know kind of which way to flow, where, where to go with our prayer, where to go with our worship. And I'm so thankful that he talks to us and that he, he guides us even in those areas. But this morning that was so, so beautiful because as we start a new year, I'm as excited about the new year. I'm excited about 2013. I'm excited. As we start this new year, you know what the Lord just deposited into our heart immediately? That this is a year of hope. We have such hope. Hope in the Lord and hope in, in that every promise that he has given, it will be fulfilled. He is our fulfillment. Amen. And yesterday, I went to a funeral, which the world would call it a funeral, but it was a homegoing for a dear, precious friend of mine, a woman of faith, who the Lord took her on to be with him, because how many know that his, his ways are higher than our ways? And it was a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful time in the Lord. Um, but as I was there and I was listening to testimonies about this woman's life, um, and, and just, just kind of really, it was, it was a time of being in his presence. It was beautiful. Um, and her husband was just so strong in the Lord. But one thing that really stood out to me is, is her son, 12 years old. She had one son that she left behind. Um, he, he said, or the father was saying that he, the, the son told him, Dad, I almost feel guilty because I'm not hurting so bad. And that's that peace, that's that supernatural peace of the Holy Spirit that you can't describe. But when he said that, I just, I thought to myself, wow, what peace. You are a God of peace. And you've given this young man hope. He has hope and he knows he's going to make it. God's going to be everything he needs in this upcoming year. And I declare that. I declare that for this church. I declare that for this city for this state and even for this nation. God is going to be everything that we need. He is our provider, our protector. He is our peace. And everything that we can imagine that we need in life, He's given us everything we need for life and godliness because He is our hope. So, Father God, we just release this service to you today as, as we begin to enter into this new year, God, with excitement. Father, with anticipation of your Holy Spirit, of the wonderful and awesome things that's going to take place. And Father, there's probably many here right now that have probably said, you know, 2012 was hard for me. And maybe through some things and, and some um, life's challenges and, and some disappointments and some circumstances that has risen, I lost my hope this year. But Father, I declare in the name of Jesus that hope is deposited into the hearts of your people today. And God, it's only through you. It's through your hope. You are our hope. But God, I thank you that you are stirring something up in your people this morning. Father, for hope for the new year. God, that you are the provider. You're the protector. You're everything that we'll ever need, Lord God. You're our comforter, Lord Jesus. So we worship you, God, and we just thank you, Lord, for all the new things. God, the new hope, the new joy, the new excitement 
the newness that this year will bring, the newness of even of your spirit, the new depths and the levels of commitment that you are calling us in this church to. We thank you for the challenge and for the opportunity to dig deep, Father, to dig deep wells, Lord God, in the spirit as we release this new year unto you, O oh Father God. And we release this service to you and give you praise and we thank you for your, all your wonderful, glorious works. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
four, and this isn't just a time filler. I don't just have to grab a microphone. When the Holy Spirit says, say something, I want to be obedient. But we know this. Our worship experience starts long before we ever get to church. See, I wasn't, I wasn't listening to rap this week, unless it was Christian rap. Wasn't listening to rock and roll. I quit doing that when I quit playing in the rock and roll band. I've been listening to praise and worship. I've been praising God this week through the good times and through the bad times. Hallelujah. I've not been talking about somebody else. I've been talking to Him. Amen. I'm in mean, a relationship with Him this week. It started way before I got here this morning. And he wants to be intimate with us. I want to tell you this morning, right now, I want to do you a favor and tell you this, that if something other than him is on your mind, it's bigger than him in your life. God says you're going to have to let that go. You're going to have to give it to me. You're going to have to get caught up in me. Because listen, friend, here's the bottom line. You will never belong. You will never belong until you belong to Him. I am my beloved and He is mine. So I want to encourage you with those words this morning. I know that's not a seeker-sensitive message. I'm sorry. But I want to encourage you with that this morning. Give it to God and turn it over to Jesus and belong. Whatever it is, your Bible says to cast your cares upon Him. Why are you preaching, Pastor Steve, during the praise service? I've seen more times than not, probably even more often than an altar call where we'll be in praise and worship and get caught up in the Spirit and focus our mind on the things of God. And God just immediately, nobody had to lay hands on us or pray for us, but God just immediately gives us the answer to what we're going through because our focus was on Him, not our problem. God just immediately will lift the burden, whatever it is. And when you walk out of here, the worship service don't stop there. Because the enemy is going to try to put something back in your ear or in your mind. And you're just going to have to get right back into your worship and praise. Maybe you don't believe this way. But if you hang around here in his presence long enough, God will lead you to that. Pastor Steve, is there scripture for any of this? Listen, when you get to heaven, you're going to be praising God 24-7. I don't care what, what, what belief might have told you different. I don't, care, I don't care who told you there's more than one God. There's only one God. And when we get to heaven, we're going to be praising Him all day long. All night long. But your worship starts before you ever get to church. Or it won't happen at church. Remember, with no worth ship there's no worship God's got to mean something to you for there to be worship come on sing that again I finally found where I belong because I can say that today I have finally found where I belong and it's in his presence God you're bigger
to that place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you. You can make me like you. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. So take me to, take me to that place, Lord, to that secret place where I can be with you. You can make me like you. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. Wrap me in your arms. So there is a God and there is a God who loves me. seconds and just worship Jesus this morning. Can we all do that?
Let's just t- turn our eyes upon Jesus this morning. Come on, church, lift your voice. Come on, lift your voice and just worship Jesus this morning. Come on. Come on, we say he's the reason for the season. Come on, let's just worship him this morning. Come on and lift your voices this morning. Jesus, Jesus. Come on, church, lift your voices this morning. Come on, lift your voices. You're in a church where you can do that. It's okay. Lift your voices and just get radical for Jesus for a few minutes. Lift your voice to him. Come on, church. Come on, church, put your hands together and just give Jesus a hand clap of praise this morning. Come on, clap like he's worth something to you. See, there's a guy in the background. He knew Jesus had to be in the front. He knew Jesus had to be front and center. Amen. And that's what he's called us in our lives, to put him front and center. Amen. If we don't have him front and center, there's going to be things going on that don't need to be going on in our lives. So I just praise him today, and I worship him. Amen. He's our all in all. He's our everything. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, worship team. You guys can be seated. Glad you're in the house of the Lord this morning. It's good to have you here. Hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. I'm still saying Christmas. Hope you had a Merry Christmas, and I hope you have a great New Year. Amen. We'll, um, thank you, ushers, for getting those. We'll bring those up right before um, the message this morning. Um, just a couple of quick announcements. We'll get these out of the way real quick, but they're important. They're very important. Yes, the children, you guys can go ahead and be dismissed. Not the adults. You need to hear the announcements. But children, you guys can go ahead and go out to the foyer. And um, they will take you to Children's Church. A couple of quick things, and then, um, Brother Bud, if you'll get prepared to sing. A couple of quick things. I was on the phone with Pastor Randy this morning. They're having a great time in Tennessee, um, him and his family. So continue to keep them in your prayers. 
the Lord is dealing with him about some things that he's going to be bringing um, to you next Sunday morning, the first Sunday of the year. Today's the last Sunday of the year, and we're going to finish out strong. God's given me a word for this local body, which I believe is a word for the body at large. I really do believe that. Um, but we're going to finish off strong today, and then next Sunday, Pastor Randy has some things he's going to be sharing with you. And one of the things he's going to be sharing with you is we're going to be fasting starting next Sunday, the 6th, um, corporately. Um, the leaders, God, um, God has spoken to us specifically about what we're going to be doing, and Pastor Randy will be talking to you more specifically about that. But we're going to be fasting January 6th um, through, 20, through the 26th. Not only our church, but again, corporately, um, worldwide, people are fasting and just seeking God's face and seeking um, His will and His strategy for 2013. I don't know about you, I enjoy God's plan and His strategies. Mine never worked. Amen? Even when I looked successful on the outside, I was failing on the inside. So we're going to seek God's will and um, the vision and the provision, all the things that He provides for us. But we're going to be fasting. Um, we're going to be doing this again from the 6th to the 26th of January. And um, I think on the 27th of January, that should be the last Sunday of the month, we're just going to bring all that together. And the Holy Spirit's going to speak to us and do some incredible um, things in our lives and in our church and in just the body of Christ. Next Wednesday night, not this coming Wednesday night, we won't be having church due to the New Year's holiday. Um, we will not be having church this coming Wednesday night, but the following Wednesday night, Pastor Randy is starting a new series in the um, adult class here in the sanctuary, um, Power and Love. It's an incredible, incredible teaching. These are some men of, um, that God has raised up, and they're spreading, spreading this message about power and love. You're not going to have a whole lot of power until you really learn to walk in love. Amen. So, Pastor Randy is going to be teaching a series. You want to be here on Wednesday nights. You really do. I'm convinced there's nothing else that's any more important than being in the house of God. Well, I got that out of the Bible. Amen. There's nothing more important than being in the house of God. I don't have to cancel plans on Wednesday nights. I've already got um, the, the church. I've already got it in. I, I got it penciled in already. So, I don't have to cancel plans. Well, you're a preacher. I did that before I preached. Amen? Well, okay. Anyway, um, I, I told you this morning I don't have any seeker-sensitive um, words or messages or seeker-friendly. Amen? Sometimes God just puts it out there for us. That's the way he does it in his word. He says, forsake not the assembly of yourselves together, even more so. So I guess he's wanting us to... Find another time other than Sunday and Wednesdays. I don't know. He said even more so. We've already, we're already doing Sunday and Wednesday. As you see the day approach, we need each other. We need to be in the house of God. Amen. So Wednesday nights, um, we're going to be having the children have um, ministry. The young people have ministry. And the adults, this series is going to be incredible. Make sure you're, you plan to be a part um, of that. I don't know about you, but I need more God. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay. So this Wednesday night, no service. The next Wednesday night, we'll start the series. We talked about the fast. Um, God is going to do some incredible things in your life through this fast. So just get ready, get ready, get ready. Um, next Friday night, um, which is the 4th, actually that's this coming up Friday night, if you want to join us, you might have got an invitation on your Facebook, um, the Downtown Lakeland Partnership. We're going to be down there. Um, just kind of promoting the school. We'll probably get a plug in about our church um, the first Friday of every month. But we'll be on Kentucky Avenue if you want to come down and hang out with us from 6 to 9 o'clock. There's anywhere between three and 10,000 people that show up um, at the DLP. So if you want to come out and be a part of that. Um, you can follow us on, on um, we might have some information next week on our websites and on Twitter, um, Facebook. We'll get some information together on that. And that so you can follow, and there'll be events put on there and different things. How many of you are Facebook junkies? And all the teenagers said, Amen. Yeah, and Twitter junkies. Okay, good way of communication. And we'll be, um, we'll be getting you some of those links and websites um, so that you can follow some of the things that are going on. 
please do not forget, I think the 10th on a Thursday night, the Aftermath Project, um, bring blankets that we're going to carry out um, to the homeless and just minister to them. And uh, we're just going to kind of plant some seeds and whoever comes in and waters it. And then we'll just believe in God to give the increase in these, um, these people's life that, that are hurting. And, and we're just going to go out and just be the hands and feet of Jesus. He, he, didn't, he didn't call us to condemn them or, or just try to, if we, don't, if we don't get them saved before we leave there, we feel like we felt. It's not really about that. It's just going out loving them and, and just being there for them. And, and meeting the needs that they have the be- very best we can and believing that God will do the rest. So I want to encourage you to be a part of that. Uh, there's an opportunity for you to, to get involved in the things that God has called his body to do. That will be Thursday the 10th, if I'm not mistaken. So bring some blankets um, next Sunday, um, which that date will be the 6th, or you can bring them the following Wednesday, which I think is the 9th. So that will be the last opportunity. Um, that you'll have to do that. If you're here for the first um, first time this morning, or maybe you've not been here in a long time, will you raise your hand so that we can just give you a card to fill out? Do we have any first-time visitors? We're all home folks um, this morning, so that's great. Um, if you have an urgent prayer need that we can pray about for you, I want you to raise your hand, um, fill this out, put it in the offering tray, and we're going to believe God to um, meet these needs and answer um, these prayers. Now, as Mitch is doing this, God has called Sunrise to some special uh, assignments. Um, we're a governmental church. Pastor Randy has talked about that. We'll be talking more about that. Um, God is calling us into some new areas, so some new things. Um, the Word of God says, Behold, I make all things new. And He's going to continue to do that. He, God's going to continue to challenge us. He'll never leave you right where you're at. And he's not going to leave the church right where it's at. He's got some things he's talking to us about. Pastor Randy will be sharing more of that about, with, um, about that with you. But at this point, we, we have just entered into something um, that God has opened a door. And I want, I want Dee to come just share with you a little bit about this area that we're getting into and some things that um, God is doing. So just open your, your spirit to um, some of the things that she's getting ready um, to share with you. Come on, Dee. Um, Pastor Randy asked that he do this um, this morning. So just take your liberty and just share with us um, what it is a spirit would have you share with the church this morning concerning the gates of Issachar. Good morning, church. How are you doing today? Amen. So, um, all of us would know that sunrise has been earmarked to impact the world. Do we agree? Sunrise has been earmarked. Sunrise has been called to impact the world. It's not just in, in here. Do we agree? Amen. And this really is a word that the Lord has given to Sunrise. He has called Sunrise to be a kingdom church. Now what he has been doing, um, we believe he has been taking Sunrise through a process. We are on a divine timetable, as, as we would say it. And he has been ordering Um, Many things he has been putting things in place for us and we are just walking in them just walking in them Um, Now we just came out of a season where we would call it um, um, Freedom deliverance no more shackles, right? All the chains had fallen off Um, He really walked us through some things where we are now free to go out into the world Amen now um Sunrise being a church which is one who is going to be impacting the nation. But he has said specifically to us in this season, we are called to be the sons of Ezekiel. And the sons of Ezekiel are the sons, the sons of Ezekiel is one of the groups or the tribes of the, of the children of Israel, right? And that group is the one that discerns the time. The sons of Ezekiel is the group which discerns the time and the season. Now, with Sunrise being a church which is called to the nation, Sunrise, one of Sunrise's goal or one of Sunrise's calling right now is to recognize what the Lord is saying to the body and declare it. Okay? 
So he will be revealing to us things that will be unfolding even more in the body, but more so in the wider community. Now, um, about two or three weeks ago, we, were, we received a call from a prayer ministry, which is Poke on the Prayer. Pastor Steve received the call, and um, we were invited to join this group to be praying for Polk County, right? Now, we believe that um, the Lord really has some wonderful but more powerful things, especially for Lakeland. Lakeland, which is a part of Polk, um, actually the biggest city in Polk County, which is almost 100,000 um, people, um, is really a pivotal part of this calling to the Polk County. Um, Sunrise has been, has been called to be a part of praying to see the manifestations of the things that the Lord has for Polk come into fruition. Okay? Now, this, this group, which is Polk Under Prayer, um, the Lord has called the leader, which is Tim Williams, the Lord has called him to assign or name 12 gates, which is equivalent to the 12 tribes okay, of Israel. And again, you would be hearing pastor keep mentioning to us that we are, we represent the children of Israel and we are going into the promised land, right? So the Lord has confirmed it even externally to us and we were called and we were actually chosen to be the tribe, which is the Ezekar tribe. Now, we have, um, we went to one of the meetings um, and uh, realize that this is something that the Lord really wants us to do. The week when Dr. George came here, which was about two Sundays ago, the Saturday before that, we were assigned to the Poinciana or the Haines City um, location. So Sunrise, as the sons of Ezekiel, is assigned to that entrance in Poe County. So what we're to, do, to be doing is to be praying for that entrance of Poe County as the sons of Ezekiel. So what that means, whatever it is that the Lord desires for that gate, which is the Ezekiel gate, we are supposed to be praying, discerning, and declaring those things. Now, there are times when we will be required as a, um, the representation, the body of Christ in sunrise, to go out to that gate. That gate is the eastern gate, or one of the eastern gates. So Sunrise is going to be the sons of Ezekiel who will be guarding the Ezekiel gate at the eastern side of Poe County. Okay? Now, when we, um, two of us went there about two Saturdays ago, and on our way coming back, and the Lord just really showed up. On our way coming back, the Lord said, today, um, today evangelism has started in Poe County. Not only Poe County, but in Sunrise. And then the next day, which was the Sunday, was the day when Dr. George came. And he was now ministering to us about evangelism, going out, um, going out to minister to the community. That was a confirmation of what had happened the Saturday before, right? And then we had um, Ryan going out. He went out in December as well. They went out to, to um, donate. What did they donate again, Bradley? So it was Bradley and, and Past and Brother Mitch. Hot chocolate and coffee, right? Now these are ways in which the Lord is now subtly indicating that we have, we have now moved into a season of evangelism. Okay? So we are prepared. He has, he has seen us now fit to go out into the community. One of the ways in which we go out is as a group of the Ezekiel tribe. Okay? Now, the next thing, as you see on January 10th, is going to be the, 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 the aftermath project. These are signs when the Lord, that the Lord is saying, it's now time for sunrise to go out. We are prepared. We, are, we have been preparing, but it's not to be in the four walls. It's for us to go out because the, har the harvest is plenty. The harvest is plenty. He's preparing us through ETS. To be prepared because he said the laborers are few. 
So when he is saying to us now, you have been assigned, one, as the sons of Ezekiel, but two, to evangelize, it means that he sees us ready and fit. And if, we, and if, if he says we are ready and fit, who are we to disagree? Our posture should be to trust and obey. Nothing else. Okay? When we trust, faith without works is dead. When we trust, we are applying faith. But when we obey, that's when the works comes in. So our attitude should be just to trust him and obey. So whenever um, there are events that are, um, that are announced for us to go out and evangelize, like the Aftermath Project, we need to be a part of it. Because this is, these are not just casual things. The Lord is clearly telling us that it is now the season of going out, getting the harvest, and bringing them in. That is the time that we're in now. He is ready. He has been prophesying to us throughout 2012. But he's now saying to us, 2013 is the year of the fulfillment of my prophecies. Amen? Do we believe? Do we want to see the things that he has promised come to pass? And if we do, then we have a part to play. We, the sons of Ezekiel, need to go out and we need to declare that this is the year of the Lord. And it is time to take back everything that has been stolen for us. So we are going into the kingdom of darkness and we are pulling them back out. And we are bringing back the children of God into light. Amen? So I'm going to encourage us to just be preparing our hearts at all times and to be obedient. Thank you, Dee. And thank you for being obedient to what the Lord is saying. Amen. He's going he's gonna to involve all of us, so just be ready. He's going to involve all of us. He's going to challenge us um, this year. One other thing that we're going to be doing in probably July, we're still fasting and praying about it. We're going to be having a youth conference here um, on campus. We're, we're praying about this, um, and we'll be going out. Um, as well. So be praying, praying with us about that if that is for this year. It's going to take a lot of planning between now and then, but if, if God wants us to do that this year, we're going to certainly um, do that. We believe God has something in, special in store for the young people um, in Polk County. Um, they're going to be part of this end time harvest as well. Amen? So we'll be telling you more about that. God is strategically doing some things in the Spirit um, I was talking again with Pastor Randy this morning. Um, yesterday, I was at a funeral, and as I was coming in, Sheriff Grady Judd was walking out. I've never spoken to him, but I had a chance to talk to him, introduce myself, and speak to him, and, and I actually got to talk to him one-on-one, um, -on -one, and um, just a great guy, very humble um, man, and we had a very good conversation. Um, in January, I've been invited to go to the county commission meeting with the mayor, their first meeting of the year. Um, and the mayor's going to introduce me. I'm going to do the invocation. We're going to be talking with him. God has already connected us and, and hopefully meeting with him in January just about some other things that um, God is doing. So God is kind of connecting us and, and doing some, um, some things just to simply further the kingdom of God. Amen? I don't know if you know it or not. I'm sure you're very aware of it, but our, our sheriff and our um, mayor are both solid, solid um, Christian um, men of God. Amen? Um, a, 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 a real man is a man of God. I read that on Facebook this morning, or either it was last night. So if you want to be a real man, be a man of God. And these guys are men of God, and, and we just believe God is just doing some things, and we're just excited about the things that he's doing. Ushers, if you'll come quickly, we're going to receive the um, tithe and the offering um, this morning. Amen? Brother Bud, if you'll come and just get premier prepared, you can come on up at this point um, and get ready just to minister to us um, in song this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Dale, if you'll just stand and just um, pray over this um, offering. Brother Dale Hammond, if you'll just um, pray, pray for us and pray over the offering this morning, then Brother Bud's going to minister to us. Amen.
Amen. As I was preparing this song yesterday, uh, practicing several different songs, I now live in an apartment building. There's a family lives above me, and <clears throat> they they play this music that I don't like. It has cursing in it, some of the foulest stuff that you've ever heard, and a lot of rap. But as I was preparing, um, I started singing. I opened my sliding door where they could hear. They got louder. I didn't, I didn't do it to be spiteful, but I had to get louder to hear myself. But then the Lord spoke to me, and he says, you were there. You were there. And I was. I mean, I've, I've probably done some things that, whew, that they look, might look like Christian in the eyes of some people, but <laughs> because I did some pretty foul things myself. But you know what? I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I give my life to Jesus, and I, I'm so glad that he, he found me. And people, when you make that statement, they say, well, he knows where you were all the time. Yes, but he found me in my sins. He had me in a place where I couldn't get away from. He had me down on my knees. And that's the best place to be because the closest you are to God is when you're on your knees. And I am so glad that he found me and, and turned me around. My life hadn't been the same, and I'm glad. I have mountains, yeah, but I got valleys too. The valleys is when my faith is put to the test. People say, I don't like them valleys, but I do because I learn in those places. I learn not to go back there anymore. And I am so glad he found me. I was on the mountain. Wandering from the fountain When I heard my Savior speak to me He said, come to me, relent And of your sins repent Then I'm gonna lead you out Where you can see Whoa, oh, I'm so glad he found me In love he found me He wrapped his arms around me And he led me to the shelter His own And oh The joy of knowing With hearts the glowing Someday I'm going To my home My home in glory Gonna love him ever, gonna stray from him, no never. For he's the truest friend that I've ever knew. And when I see him yonder, my love will still grow fonder in that happy land beyond the blue. Oh, oh, I'm so glad he found me In love he found me He wrapped his big old arms around me 
then he led me to the shelter. Now I'm one of his own. And oh, the joy of knowing with hearts aglow. Someday I'm going to my home, my home in glory, and walk the streets paved with gold. Praise God. The cheapest thing in heaven, gold, and we're going to be walking on it. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Bud. Let's give him a hand again for his ministry. We appreciate Brother Bud and the ministry that God has called him to. And um, we're just looking forward to the things that God's going to do. Amen. You guys can go ahead and bring those up if you want to. Um, If you've got your Bibles this morning, go ahead and turn with us. We'll have this on the screen. I think we're going out of the New Living Translation. So if you don't have the New Living Translation, Well, there's a lot of translations anymore, isn't there? Isn't there? Um, And they read so different. But anyway, if you got a new living, you might want to turn there. If not, you might want to just follow. Thank you, guys. You might want to just follow um, with us on the screen this morning. And we won't put it up quite yet, but we're going to go to 1 Thessalonians. Chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. Let's just go to the Lord in prayer this morning as you're turning Um, there and as we're getting prepared to go there in the scriptures this morning father god come on you pray with me father god we just thank you for this wonderful opportunity god that we have god what a privilege and an honor it is to be in your house this morning god i can truly say there's no place god i would rather be god than to be with you God, and your people, God, corporately just lifting up the name of Jesus and just praising you, God, and giving you worship and honor and glory because, God, no matter what's going on in our life, no matter what we're facing, God, you're worthy, God, of our praise, God. You're worthy of the glory, God, and the honor. Lord, you're truly deserving of that. Lord, we just thank you for your presence this morning, Father God. We thank you for the things you're doing in our lives, God. Lord, we thank you for the things you're going to do in 2013. Come on, church. Lord, as we close out 2012, Father God, Lord, we know that you're still on the scene, God. You're still moving, God. You're still doing things in the earth, God. It's not over until you say it's over, God. Lord, and I just pray this morning by your spirit, God, that you'll breathe life into this body this morning, God, that you'll open our spiritual ears, Father God, even the teenagers this morning, God, that you'll open their spiritual ears, God, and have us hear what it is that you're saying to the church, God, in this very hour, God, because you're speaking, God, and it's important that we're in a posture to where we can hear what it is that thus saith the Lord of hosts this morning, Father God. So, Lord, I pray this morning that you'll just speak through your servant, God, as we bring out and expand on your word, Father God. And we're just going to give you praise and glory and honor, and everybody said, Amen. I'm going to try not to be too long this morning. Um, I just want to share with you something that the Holy Spirit, I believe, dropped in my heart. I talked to Pastor Randy last week. I said, man, are you going to be at church Sunday? He said, no. I said, well, who's preaching? He said, well, I guess you are. So I said, well, I guess I will. And um, he just kind of assumed, and I probably should have too. I mean, after all, that's what I do. Even though I've not preached here in a long time. It's either been Alex or Josh or, um, you know, other people. And um, I, I believe everybody deserves a shot if they're called. Amen. And I think they do a pretty good job. Do you guys think Alex is a pretty good preacher? I, th- I think he does a pretty good job. I think Pastor Randy is going to have him preach again the first part of the year. So we're excited um, about that. But I'm excited about this opportunity that God's given me. Uh, this, this is something that God has put a command on my life. I probably wouldn't have chose this um, personally. And um, even when he called me out, I still really didn't get what he was saying. Amen. 
So I'm just trying to be obedient to God and His will and His plan and His purpose for my life. After all, as Christians, I believe that's what we're supposed to do. Amen? Now, now Jesus didn't have a pulpit ministry per se. Um, he did a lot of what you guys do and um, a lot of what I used to do. He was just out working, but he was still being Jesus. Amen? He was a carpenter, right? And was out in the real world, amen, but he was still being Jesus. And that's what God has called the church to do this morning, amen. We go to our jobs every day and deal with heathens and people that you think that have lost their mind, and really they have. But we're still supposed to be Jesus to them and love them. That's what God's called each and every one of us to do. You've got to realize, church, and you've heard this before and you know this, we're all called. We're called to our workplace. We're called to our families. We're called to the house of God. There's involvement here that takes place that you need to be a part of. Amen? Hallelujah. So I just want to encourage you with that this morning. As I begin to pray and seek God, I didn't really have to struggle with what I was to say. God just immediately gave me a word, and I just wrote a few things down. And um, he said, well, we'll pick up on it closer to Sunday. And then God finished giving me the rest of what he has for this body. Today, a lot of what I'm going to talk to you about, um, church, you've heard before. A lot of these scriptures I'm going to read to you are going to be very familiar. Some of them you might even could quote. But what the Holy Spirit spoke to me when he downloaded this word into my spirit was a simple fact that for the church to move in, for you personally, because you are the church, it has nothing to do with this building. Amen? You are the church. It has nothing to do with this building. But when God started to speak to me, He said, tell the people that the word that I'm going to send forth this morning is going to be their key to 2013. Amen? Now, I'm not up here this morning to pre preach a prosperity message. I'm not up here this morning to tell you 2013 is, is just going to be a spiritual Disney world and it's just a place you and your kids are going to enjoy every day and everything's going to be hunky-dory and it's going to go just the way you planned it and the devil's not going to be anywhere around. It's going to be just like heaven. I wish I could tell you that, but it won't be like heaven until we get to heaven. And the way that we have heaven on earth is we go to God's Word and say, God, speak to us. What are you speaking to me, God? What, what do you have for me in this new year, God, in this new season of my life, God? Where are you taking me? Because, see, each and every one of us under the sound of my voice this morning, you're important to God. God created you, like I said earlier, with a plan and with a purpose. And usually his plan and his purpose, God says, I'll give you the desires of your heart. Normally what his plan and purpose is, is not what you had in mind. It's usually something completely different. Amen? Does anybody remember the story of Jonah in the Bible? Jonah had, Jonah had plans to do this, right? And God says, no, you're going to go here and do that. Amen? And Jonah didn't get it, did he? Sometimes we just don't get it. Some, uh, more often than not, I don't get it. Amen? But I always go back to God and I say, okay, God, here I am. Send me. Kind of like Isaiah. Amen? So God has a purpose. Don't think that you're insignificant. The devil would like to tell you that you're very insignificant and that it's too late. And there is really no plan and purpose. And you've done too much. And, and you can't do this or you can't do that. That's all the lie, a lie of the devil. God has a plan and God has a purpose for you. And he's going to give some instruction this morning on how we can do that. We're all looking into 2013. We're all looking um, towards the new year. Renewed hopes. New dreams of becoming a better you. More for our families. Getting the old behind us and looking for something bigger and better. Amen? Sometimes we're looking for change. We want change um, to take place in our life. And while I think it's really good to have hope, amen, because there's three things you won't have in hell or people won't have in hell. I don't plan on going there. And one of them is hope. Hope will run out in hell. There will, it's over. But while we're alive, Jesus is our hope and heaven is our home. Amen. But hope is still available to us. And, and while it's, I think it's good, somebody told me, they said, man, don't make New Year's resolutions. You never follow through with them, and I finally found that out to be true. 
But I'm going to keep hope alive. There's some things that I want to accomplish in 2013, and it's really things that I want to see God accomplish through me because I've just come to understand my life is not my own. I've been bought with a price. Amen? But while it's good to have hope, may I tell you, friend, that unless we completely surrender... Now, I'm, I'm going to say that word one more time, and God will reveal that to you just as he did me in the coming year. Unless we completely surrender this new year to God. Now, I want you to go ahead and just let that sink in because God is getting ready to start a process to where with some of us he's going to do away with your plans and your agenda. I know that all too well. He's done that in my life. He came to me in March, and I've shared that with a lot of people and, and said, man, you, what he really said, and he, but he was nice about it, is he said, you really don't get it. I'm getting ready just to mess you up because of what I'm wanting to do. See, I thought I was getting it, Ben. I, I thought I had it all together, man. I thought I was doing everything. And God said, oh, I, I'm about to mess you up because i got to do in you so that I can do through you. That's, that's really his plan and purpose for us. When we talk about being the hands and feet of Jesus, young people, we can't do that till we figure out what is his mindset and what is it he wants us to do. What does he want us to be? So it's got to be a year. And you need your pen and paper, by the way. I want you to write some of this stuff down because you won't remember half of it. There will be some things that stick out at you, but if you've got a pen and paper, um, I, I want to just challenge you this morning to take some notes. It's okay to do that. It's okay for me to pause and just give you time to do that. If you've got it with you, if you don't, that's fine too. I try to keep a pen and paper with me because God, God will speak to us 24-7, won't he, Dale? God will speak to us 24-7. I have found out if I don't write it down, I'm in trouble. Amen. My memory, I, I, maybe it's because I'm 45 now. I don't know. But I write it down anymore. But if you're taking notes this morning, I want you to put that down, that 2013, your success will come through complete surrender to God. Your success, the things you want to achieve, the things that you want to do, the things that you want to accomplish, the only way you're going to see any of that fulfilled is through complete surrender. You've got to surrender this, your, your life to God this entire year. Complete consecration is, is the way the word the word. Um, declares it says to declare to be set apart sacred okay so we've got to be completely consecrated that's that's surrender okay we've got to consecrate ourselves to the lord and it means to be set apart as sacred and sacred means to be made holy or declared holy Okay, so you, you, you got to set yourself apart and then you got to say, God, come on in because we know he's changing us from glory to glory. He's not going to leave us where we're at. Come on. Okay, and you got to say, God, I decree and I declare over my life, God, that I'm holy, God. I'm chosen, God. You, your plans and, and, and your provision, God, the things that you have for my life, God, are perfect. Your ways are perfect. But I understand, God, that your ways are bigger than my ways, God, so that I, I have to completely surrender myself to you, God, and consecrate myself, God, or I'll never really get what it is that you want to show me. Because your mind won't be able to fathom the things of the Lord. You've got to get your spiritual mind on. Amen? So that we don't walk in the flesh. If we walk in the flesh, we're going to what? Fulfill the things of the flesh, the lust of the flesh. So God wants us to be, sa God wants us to be set apart as sacred. Made or declared holy is what sacred means. There's really no other teaching in the Bible. Now, there's scriptures people will pull out. Okay? And, and preach other things. But I still believe in holiness. Amen? Unless we do these things, unless we decide, God, we're going to be completely surrendered to you, God. Lord, we're going we're to consecrate ourselves, God. We're going to fast, God. We're going to seek your face. If we don't do those things, it's going to be the same old, same old in our lives, church. I don't know about you. There's some things that I went through and experienced in, in 2012. I'm really glad 
um, for the things that the Lord did. But I don't want to rehash all of that. I'm ready to get into 2013 and get the new things of God. There's new territory that we're going into. There's new land that God's called you to possess. Some of you are still trying to get your family members and pull them into that land. And God says, if you'll do the things that I've called you to do, if you'll separate yourself, if you'll consecrate yourself, I'm going to use you as an instrument to pull them in to my kingdom. And not only am I going to pull them into my kingdom, I'm going to set them up on high places and use them for my glory. You can can accept that prophetic word from the Lord this morning. Maybe all your family's saved and they're all going to heaven and they're all in full-time ministry and they got it all together, but I've never met anybody like that. I believe we're all in need of a Savior and God wants to use us to reach them. Amen? I've got one in jail this morning that I'm praying for and that I'm going to be fasting for and that I'm going to be believing for that God will just set him free. Amen? That's what God's called us to do. I met I, I I heard a I heard a lady I didn't meet her but I heard a lady on on TV. Um, she preaches. Her name's Darlene Bishop. Some of you might have heard Darlene Bishop. Um, she's another one that just speaks the truth. Okay, and she had a brother that got put in prison. This guy was messed up. This guy was just he was he was a mess. This woman went to fasting and praying. Now she didn't just miss her cornflakes for breakfast, she really went on a fast. She was really interested. Thank you, Brother Bud. She was really interested in getting hold of God for, for her brother. And this lady went on a fast and started praying and seeking God. And lo and behold, in that jail cell, <clears throat> God reached down and touched this brother and saved him and turned his life around for the glory of God. Amen. But because somebody consecrated themselves, somebody separated themselves, somebody decided, I'm going to completely give this thing to God, God was able to reach down through that and touch this guy. That's what God's called us into. Now, this morning, I want to tell you, as we get into this, and again, I'm not going to be long. I'll do my best just to stay with my notes so that we can um, get through. But right now, I'm not ready to get through. I'm, re I'm ready to hear what it is the Lord is saying to us. But for, for 2012, a lot of us were in our comfort chair, our, our easy chair. We ser served God out of comfort. And when it was easy or when it was convenient, I was doing that up until about March. I was doing my preaching thing, you know, doing what God called me to do, hello, um, loving God, trying to love my wife and be a better husband and fast, you know, if I could get through it. Come on. Yeah, and, and read my Bible and do the things. Well, I was just, I was, well, 100% Christian. And God came to me and he said, man, I never really called you to be comfortable. There's, there's a greater cause than you. There, there's a purpose for your life that you know not of. You've not even got part of it. And there's some change that's going to have to take place in your life. And you're going to have to come out of your easy chair. Uh-huh. You're going to have to get out of your easy chair. See, some of you, the reason you're kind of like me, the reason you're staying stuck, and it's just it was just a cycle. You were coming to church. You were doing what God called you to do. You were doing everything you could um, do to be what he, he asked you to do. But the reason the cycle just continues on in your life is because you're just staying comfortable. You're staying in the easy chair. And God came to him and he said, you know, and, and I've experienced that this last week of being off, of being off for a week. See, I've, I've gotten comfortable because up until we got off of school for a couple of weeks, it was just crazy. It was night and day and uh, we were running around here. So I was ready for a break. But I found myself about the third or fourth day in the break just getting real comfortable. Bev, I started sleeping in until about 930 or 10 o'clock. I normally don't do that. I ended up, I would start staying up till 12 or 1 in the morning. Um, my, my kids said I, they wanted to go do stuff, and I said, look, I want to just stay in this house for about four or five more days and not do anything. You understand what I'm, what I'm getting at, amen? So I started, I started to have to kind of put, all the kids were saying, we're ready to go back to school, and I was saying, no, 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 I'm not ready to go back to school yet. I, 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 need, a, I need a little bit more time off. But the thing is, I started I started having to push myself. 
look, you need to get busy. There's some things you need to be doing. You can't get complacent. You can't just sit in your easy chair and, and relax. You understand what I'm saying? God is saying that to us this morning, that if you stay comfortable, amen, See, we were never called just to sit on a pew. If you just sit on a pew, you, here's what the Holy Spirit said. You won't be sitting on a pew for long. You'll be right back, back out in the world. Amen? Or you'll just be sitting on a pew, like Pastor Randy says, and soaking and souring. God's called us to get busy. See, I like sitting in my comfort chair, but God said, you know what, I'm going to move you over here, and it's not going to be as comfortable. It's not going to be really what you had planned in life. It's not going to always go the way you want it to. What you don't understand, Steve, this is what God started revealing to me, is in March is, I've got a plan, and I've got a purpose and I've got a cause for your life as a Christian, not just as a preacher that's greater than what you thought sitting over there in your easy chair. I, I want you to be a little bit uncomfortable. Like Bud said earlier, sometimes we go down into those valleys. Now, those are the only times that we're really going to see the face of God. Those are the only times that we're really going to stop life and cry out to him and say, God, I need you. I don't know what you're trying to show me through this. I don't know what you're trying to teach me through this, God, but I'm, I'm willing to learn, God. I don't want to have to go back and repeat this, God. God says, I'm taking you out of the easy chair, church. See, some of you, some of you thought that 2013 was just going to be a time just to really enjoy life. Everything's going to change. Well, everything's going to change, but it's going to change God's way in your life. He's ready to grow us up. He's ready to do some things in our lives. He's ready to really help us change the world. How do we change a world? It starts with me and you. See, I can't give away what I don't have. Young person, you can't give away at school. If you're sitting in the easy chair like everybody else, you're not going to have anything to give away. They're all already there. God's called you to get uncomfortable. God's calling you to give that up. To give your life away. You, you, you mean we actually, we don't just sing that song. We, we have to do it. We have to give our life away so that he can use us. Yeah, we do. In 2013. I don't apologize this morning um, for not preaching. I said this earlier and I meant this. A seeker sensitive. How many of you have heard that term? Seeker sensitive or seeker friendly churches. I, I Don't get me wrong. I believe it's good. We need to have children's programs. Please don't understand what I'm saying. I believe we need to have youth programs. I believe they need to be effective. I believe we need to go out into the community. I, I believe we need to be praying around the gates. I believe there's, there's there, all these things that we're need, we need to be doing. But listen, there's a statement in the Word of God that it says people will have itching ears. Come on, the churches are full of them this morning, and they can pack them out. And I'm not talking about any certain church, any certain denomination, or any certain preacher. But it speaks of this in the Bible. And then there will be dumb dogs who will tell these itching ears exactly what they want to hear. And, and they'll tell you something that will make your mind feel real good about what's going on in your life and, and where you're headed and what's going on. But here's, here's what I have found out. And Pastor Randy has even alluded to this. So many times the Word of God is going to offend our minds so that it can reveal our heart. It's not always going to be what we wanted. It's not going to always be what we wanted to hear. The most defining point in my life is when a minister said to me, Steve will change when he wants to change. I thought, oh, my God, that's, that's a bold statement. He doesn't know what I'm... But that's a true statement, amen? Sometimes the Word of God is going to hit us because it's sharper than any double-edged sword. It's going to pierce. It's going to divide. But then if you allow it to pierce and divide, you'll find out that the Word of God will conquer in your life. The things that you've not been able to get a handle on, you'll see God come through. Maybe, maybe, maybe you just want to stay where you're at. Well, God's already come to me and said, I'm not going to allow you to stay where you're at. And I don't know about you, but my plan didn't work. My plan B didn't work. My plan C didn't work. And I don't have anything to go back to. Amen? I'm ready to go for God in 2013. See, the bottom line, church, is this. I'm going get, to get into this quickly. I'll try to stay with my notes. 
we're coming, we're, we're coming into very perilous times. Now, most of the time when you turn on your TV, most preachers, you're not going to hear that. Some of them you will. But we are coming into very perilous times. You don't believe me? Ask Chick-fil-A or Hobby Lobby. These, these businesses and these owners and these people that are standing up for what's right and for truth and standing up for God, they're getting it in the neck. Hobby Lobby's getting it in the neck to $1.3 million per day just for standing up for God. If you'll remember, um, prayer was taken out of our schools. The Ten Commandments has been removed. Amen? There's things going on. And God is calling us in these times to rise above and do the work that he's called his church to do. Again, who is the church? You're the church. You're the church. There's nobody under the sound of my voice that is excluded for that. If you don't believe me, the times we're living in, start reading and studying your word. Um, look, look, look on the news. Start following the news. More than that, though, listen to the Holy Spirit. We talked about this earlier, the, the, the sons of Issachar. God will reveal to you where the times that we're living in. God will reveal to you the things that are coming up. You don't just have to have a prophet to speak that to you. God will start revealing things to your spirit about what it is, the times that we're going through, the things that you need to do, the things that your family needs to be doing, the things that you need to be doing individually that take you into a different type of year. Again, I don't know about you, but I want a different type of year than 2012. God has called us to do more. God has called us to reach more people. God has called us to go higher. God has called you to go deeper in the things of God. But again, it's like we said at the beginning, it's got to be a complete surrender. It's got to be consecration before the Lord. See, we understand that according to God's word, the next step in prophecy would be what the Apostle Paul penned in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. John, can you throw that up there? We're just going to read that briefly. You guys know these scriptures, but I, I want to just break this down for you. But in 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 um, through va verse um, 18, I just want to read this. And now, dear brothers and sisters, okay, listen to this, church. Write this down. Get this in your spirit. And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to the believers who have died so that you will not grieve like people who have no hope. And then in verse 14, it says, For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you this directly from the Lord. We who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the Christians who have died will rise from their grave. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on earth will be caught up. Remember that word, caught up. In the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. And then in verse 18, it says, So encourage each other with these words i'm here today to declare to you church i want you to listen to me there is going to be this is the next step in bible prophecy bible prophecy has been fulfilled the gospel needs to be spread around the world guess what turn on tbn and boom it's everywhere prophecy has been fulfilled we can be raptured out of here as the church of the living God if we're ready to go before i ever get done with this message according to your bible Okay, that's the way I interpret it. There's a lot of different interpretations of this. But there's going to be, uh, Paul penned this in Thessalonians. It's the next thing that's going to happen in Bible prophecy. There's going to be a catching up that takes place real soon. Real soon. The rapture, is. somebody said, well, it says, it says there, being caught up, it doesn't say rapture. And I, I just want to expound on this just for a minute. You can go study this. Um, but the rapture is a term in Christian eschatology, which eschatology just simply gets into death, judgment, and heaven and hell. You can go and do a little bit of a, a study on that. But in Christian eschatology, the, the term rapture is derived from that, which refers to being caught up, discussed in 1 Thessalonians 4.17. 
when the dead in Christ and who are alive and remain will be caught up in the clouds to meet the Lord. Now, I, I want to tell you this too, and then I want to just move into this. There's a lot of interesting um, studies on etymology, which is a study of the history um, of, of words, um, doctrinal history, views. Um, I, I dealt with that a couple of weeks ago. Um, somebody said, well, the Antichrist won't be a person. It's going to be a nation. Well, I don't know what Bible he read. But anyway, there, there's a lot of different views, and there's, there's, um, there's a lot of different timing um, that people look at. But I, I just want to tell you this morning, you can study this, and you need to study this, church. You don't need to just take my word for it or Pastor Randy's word for it. You need to study your Bible. Young people, you need to be studying your Bible and find out what's going to happen the next big event in your life that's going to take place. Wow. So whether this morning, whether you're pre-tribulation or mid-tribulation, there's now one called pre-wrath, there's one called partial, or whether you're post-trib, the bottom line, it's our belief, and, and, and most all evangelicals believe this, okay, by the way, not just the Church of God people, but it's our belief this is going to be the next thing that takes place, okay? I heard one old man say it like this, and I'm not being disrespectful, but he was an older guy. I just happened to look up to older people and older preachers because normally they know something I don't. But we were sitting around the table with a bunch of other preachers in, in a conference meeting in, in Tampa with the state bishop, and, and what he said just resonated in my spirit. And he said, listen, whatever you're going to do for God, you better do quick. This, this guy said that, and it just resonated in my spirit. He said, whatever you're going to do for God, you better do quick because the time's coming to where we're not going to be able to do anything anymore. That's, that's the message interpretation of, the, of that scripture. The time's coming. And see, we all know this, and I've told the young people this. See, not, not only will, will we get to heaven and, and determine whether our name's in the book or not, but God's given us talents. He's given you abilities. He's given you things to do within the church. He's given you things to do within your circle of influence. There's things He's called you to do as a Christian because of the abilities and the talents and the influence that you have, and we will be held accountable for those things as well, whether we did them or not. So in 2013, not only are we to consecrate ourselves and live holy and separate ourselves from the world, we do all that so that we can get busy doing what it is that God's called each and every one of us as his church to do. Three quick things, and you can write these down. I'm going to move quick. We're supposed to live in a way that pleases God. I want you to turn quickly in your Bible, so we're going to put it on the screen to 2 Peter 3, 1 through 18. So we're talking about what God has in store for us individually, the church, in 2013. We understand that complete surrender is not an option, that we're to consecrate ourselves. There's a, there's a greater cause than your own. And three things that God has leading us into is one of them is this you've got to live in a way church we've already alluded to it this morning that pleases God in other words we're not a man pleaser in other words as we said earlier there's a greater cause than our life as a matter of fact the Bible speaks of laying down our life for our brother Do we find that yet 1 Peter 3, or I'm sorry, John, 2 Peter 3, 1 through 18. I'm going to try to read all this. Let me get my water before I even start, and then I'm going to move quickly. Can somebody tell me what time it is? 12.25. So I've got 45 more minutes. Amen. Okay, 10, 15, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. 2 Peter 3, verse 1. How many of you have found that? Amen? Write these down. You can write this down. Live in a way that pleases God. This is my second letter to you, dear friends. And in both of them, I have tried to stimulate your wholesome thinking and refresh your memory. You understand? That's why we come to church. Amen? We need our, 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 our memory stimulated. We, we need to refresh our thinking. 
I, I don't know about you, but I do. And then in verse 2 it says, I want you to remember what the Holy Prophet said long ago and what our Lord and Savior commanded through your apostles. Most importantly, I want to remind you that in the last day, scoffers will come, mocking the truth and following their own desires. They will say what happened to the promise that Jesus is coming again. From before the times of our ancestors, everything has remained the same since the world was first created. They deliberately forgot that God made the heavens by the word of his command, and he brought the earth out from the water and surrounded it with water. Then he used the water to destroy the ancient world with a mighty flood. And by the same word, the present heavens and earth have been stored up for the fire. They are being kept for the day of judgment when ungodly people will be destroyed. But you must not forget this one thing, dear friends. A day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord isn't really being slow about His promise, as some people think. No, He is being patient for your sake. Everybody say, for my sake. Mm -hmm. It starts with me. He does not want anyone to be destroyed, but wants everyone to repent. But the day of the Lord will come unexpectedly as a thief. As a matter of fact, in the Bible it says, as it were in the days of Noah. Men will just be doing their own thing. They'll be going to church, okay? They'll be hanging out, doing what they do. Teenagers will be doing what they do, okay? They'll, they'll, they'll be in church on Sunday morning in the bar on Friday night. They'll, they'll just be doing. It says, as it were in the days of Noah, this is what they were doing, okay? So shall it be when the Son of Man appears. They thought Noah was an idiot, didn't they? A flood, man, you're crazy, You've lost it. Well, the flood happened. It's been proven, even in our day and time. Okay? The heavens will pass away with a terrible noise, and the very elements themselves will disappear in fire, and the earth and everything on it will be found to deserve judgment. Since everything around us, I want you to pay close attention to this scripture, church. This is a key scripture into what God is speaking to us this morning. Since everything around us is going to be destroyed like this, in other words, like we just read, what holy and God, notice that word holy, what holy and godly lives should you live? Looking forward to the day of God and hurrying it along, on that day he will set up the heavens on fire. He will set the heavens on fire and the elements will melt away in flames. But we are looking forward to the new heaven and the new earth he has promised, a world filled with God's righteousness. And so, dear friends, while you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort to be found living peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Go back to that. 14. And so, dear friends... While you are waiting for these things to happen, make every effort. Sometimes you've got to make an effort to be found living peaceful lives, peaceful with one another, peaceful lives that are pure and blameless in his sight. Verse 15. And remember the Lord's patient gives people time to be saved. This is what our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom God gave him. Speaking of these things in all of his letters, speaking of these things in all of his letters, some of his commands, comments are hard to understand. And those who are ignorant and unstable have twisted his letters to mean something quite different, just as they do with other parts of Scripture. And this will result in their destruction. We talked about that earlier. I'm warning you ahead of time, dear friends. Be on guard so that you will not be carried away with the era, eras of these wicked people and lose your own secure footing. Verse 18. Rather, you must grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All the glory to Him, both now and forever. 
Amen. Listen, we have to live, church, in a way that pleases God. Peter just laid it out there real plain. As a Christ follower, we're, we're to be holy. I, I want you to know something this morning. To be holy means you're going to immediately have a target on your back when you start stepping out in the things of God and following after the Lord. Listen, I, I, I have been accused for this. I, uh, being holy, I've been shot at. I've been stabbed. I've been talked about. More so, that, that, that four-letter word is almost a cuss word anymore. I would, I would be more, con- I would be, I'm more condemned for that if, if, if I was, than if I was to go out and use a four-letter cuss word. But make no mistake about it. We're not man-pleasers. We're called to be God-pleasers. He set us apart. If you don't have a target on your back, you're about to get one because when you step out in the things of God and do what it is that He's called you to do, people aren't going to like it. People that call themselves Christians aren't going to like it. They're not going to like what you have to say. But we're not in it for them. Amen? We're in it for Him. Amen? But here's the deal. We're to come out be separate, above reproach. We're not of this world, and we don't fit in, and we don't need to be mistaken otherwise. We need to be different, church, in 2013. Amen? We need to get some grit about us. The Word of God says it. We're to be God-pleasers. The second thing is this. The first thing was you've got to live in a way that pleases God. Second Peter spelled that out for us, chapter 3. The second thing is this. You've got to have a no-quit attitude. Susan alluded to this this morning as she was opening um, the service. We were at a funeral yesterday. There were some speakers that spoke. A lot of people there, this girl was very well known. Went to a church we used to go to. Her dad was on staff. We had been praying for this girl. She was 36 years old, dear friends of ours. They're pastors who just got their first church. She went home to be with the Lord yesterday. You're talking about having a no-quit attitude. Her husband was the last one to speak. You know, and he said, God, if it's, if it's still possible, and he looked down at her casket and said, you can still raise her up if that, if, if that be your will. We know it's possible, but if that be your will. And, and somebody even mentioned, you know, the fact, I think it was her father, Brother, Brother Leroy, mentioned the fact that, you know, they just got this new church, something they had been praying for, and, you know, he doesn't understand why they're not going to be able to minister together in their church because that's what their life was all about. They were, they were a ministry that just reached out to people who were in need. They weren't your typical church, okay? They were really being the hands and feet of Jesus. And I was really inspired and I was really impressed with the fact that towards the end of the funeral, her husband got up, wife laying there in the casket, 36 years old, been praying for God to miraculous heal her healing in her life but basically what he did was he prophesied over his son that God's going to use you and he spoke into the congregation about being right with God and even though we don't understand everything God's sovereign God's in control and you know what basically what he said is I'm going to serve him anyway I'm going to serve him anyway kind of like Job I'm going to serve him. I'm going to follow after him even if I lose my other half. God, I'm going to still follow you. I'm going to serve you. It's not going to stop me from doing what you've called me to do. Man, that's commitment. I wouldn't even be able to preach that, I don't think. I, I, I think I could preach that word, but I don't know that I would even have the strength to do it. And he did that without even blinking his eye. This guy's committed to God. He was committed before he was ever a preacher. God just called him to preach. you got to have a no-quit attitude, church. Listen to me. There's going to be times where you simply, listen to this, where you simply are going to have to press through. Okay? That, that's our problem with, with, that, that's our problem with in Christianity and church circles and being a Christ follower. Man, we're good to go till the times get tough. 
and then we're not understanding it. We, we forgot that the Bible said many are the afflictions of the righteous, but God's going to deliver you out of all of them. I don't understand what happened with Kevin and Holly. I don't, I don't know all the particulars. I'm kind of like Sheriff Judd told me. I've got some questions about this one when I get to heaven. But I know this. I know my Redeemer liveth. I know where Holly's at. I know that God's went to prepare a place for me and you that we can be with him. And we're just going to have to trust him. There's going to be some tough times in 2013. I wish I could tell you different. There's churches you could go to, and they would tell you a lot different. You'd, feel, you'd leave there feeling really good. Well, you can leave here feeling really good today. That when you put your life in God's hands, it's like the little 12-year-old son said at the funeral. I, I, I just I, I tear up thinking about it. He said, Daddy, I, I don't know if he said, I don't know exactly how he said it, but he said, I, with this situation with Mama dying, and it wasn't that he was questioning God or getting mad at God or trying to figure it out. He just said, Daddy, I, I've just got a peace. I've just got a peace about Mommy in this situation. You know where that peace came from? It came from God. It came from somebody being consecrated. It came from somebody just getting real with God and say, God, and saying, God, come hell or high water, God. Lord, things that I might not understand, things that take place, the uncertainty of life, God, I'm going to serve you. And then when those times come, your Bible says there's a peace that passes all understanding. Wow. That's what I want in 2013. I don't know what I'm going to face. I don't, I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds my tomorrow. It's in his hands. You're going to have to press through, church. I know in times in my life, man, when I came up against those walls, that's when I stopped. That's when I backed off. That's when I went back to where I was, and God's not called us to go back anywhere. God's calling you to press through. You're going to have to press through doubts. Listen to me. You're going to have to press through thoughts. Come on. Some of you, those thoughts are taking you under, and you don't need deliverance. You just need discipline in your life. Some of you young people, you can just have a thought, and you're going to go for it. I deal with young people every day. You don't have to give in to those thoughts. But you're going to have them, and you're going to have to press through. You're going to have to exercise some discipline in your life. I just can't stop that. I just can't quit that. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. God wants, God wants to help you change your life. But you're going to have to exercise discipline in your life. I don't know why I stopped there. But you're going to have to press through circumstances. You don't know how bad I've got it. Listen, we've all got a story. And if mine's not as good as yours, or somebody else has got it worse than you. Okay, I'm not trying to be insensitive this morning, but you're going to have to press through that. You're going to have to press through opinions. Listen, I don't care anymore what people think about me. I'm over it. You mean you don't love people? Man, I love people. But I love them enough to tell them the truth. Well, you've got to love them into the kingdom. Yeah, but you better tough love them in sometimes. Amen. If somebody got real with me, I wasn't making any headway, friend. But you're going to have to press through symptoms. You're going to have to press through pain. You've got to know, you've got to understand this morning, church, Jesus was in the press. Jesus was in the press. Your Savior was in the press. Gethsemane, where he went to pray. When he was, he even had thoughts of opting out. When he went to pray, Gethsemane, Gethsemane stands for all press. Some of you, God wants to, to he, he's going to press you so that he can get you to where you need to be. He wants to press the very life out of you because that's what it feels like so that he can put life in you. Jesus went through it. Garden of Gethsemane. The bottom line is this. You've got to have a no-quit attitude. To live, you're going to have to die. I've got to decrease in 2013. I thought it was going to be about me. I thought it was going to be in this chair right here. I thought I was going to get to chill. God's not called any of us to chill. If you chill, you're going backwards. If you chill, you won't be chilling long. I decided to chill the next two weeks. I probably wouldn't be going to work the third week. I'd already be in a rut and a routine. Sometimes you got to make yourself get up. 
God says, I know that chair is comfortable, but I want you in this chair. This is where it's at. Sometimes it's an uncomfortable place. It's an uncomfortable situation. It's an uncomfortable circumstance. But that's where, just like Jesus, see, if Jesus would have stopped, we wouldn't be here today. Jesus said, not, your, not my will, God, but your will be done. That's when he was being pressed. It's not easy. A lot of us do real good with Christianity till we get in the press, till we get in the tough times. We get in situations and circumstances we don't understand. The good news about complete surrender and consecration, you don't have to understand it. You just know that God's got it under control. And He'll speak peace into your situation and your circumstance. And the reason He wants to get you from here to here is so that He can use you. And it's not going to be an easy process in 2013 at times. Thirdly, I'm going to close with this. You have to be separate. We've said that. Thirdly, you've got to be prepared to go where God says go and do what He says do. Say what He says say. There was a certain rich man in the Bible. You can read this later for, for the sake of time. It's in Matthew 19. We don't, you don't have to pull it up, John. But it's in Matthew 19, verses 16 through 30. You need to read this. There was a certain rich man that came to Jesus. Hey, what do I got to do to inherit eternal life? So they started conversing. The guy said, well, man, I keep all the commandments. In other words, I go to church. I, I play the part. I look good. This guy was rich. Jesus basically said, man, you don't get it. You got all the externals down. But here's what I want you to do. Love your neighbor as yourself. Go sell everything you have and give it to the poor. Jesus challenged him. Jesus went straight to that thing that he had been holding on to in 2012 and said, you've got to turn loose of that. There's, there's change coming your way. It's going to be a good thing, but you might get in a press for a while. So I can squeeze out of you what don't need to be there. This guy essentially turned away, walked away from Jesus. This guy thought he had it all together. Jesus said, to follow me and to inherit eternal life and to do the will of the Father, this is what you're going to have to do. This is what you're going to have to let go of. The guy walked away. In closing, I want you to know that 2013 can be a phenomenal year. You can be right in the center of God's will. That you're going to have to make a change from here to here. And it's not going to be, it's not always easy. Maybe you've already made that change. Maybe you've made that commitment to Christ. God, whatever you tell me to do or say or wherever you say go, God, I'm going to do that. I'm going to lay down my life for the sake of the gospel. What he has in store might not be what you had planned. He might say, like he told the disciples in Matthew, he might say, sell everything you own. Leave your father, leave your mother, leave this behind. Change careers, sell everything, drop that habit, leave that boyfriend. He might say, marry this one. He might tell you to fast once a week. He might say you need to start loving them more and forgiving them. He might say you better get away from them. He might tell you what you're going to have to do is seek my will, not your own will. Make no mistake about it, people. God is taking his church to new places in 2013. But you can't get there from here. Your comfort zone, 
God cares nothing about it. The life Jesus lived, there was nothing comfortable concerning it whatsoever except for the future he had in Christ. The future that you have in 2013 is going to have to come from over here. A little more uncomfortable position. Might not have been what you thought. Might not have been exactly the way you wanted it. When in the church are we going to get past having to have it our way? They don't sing my song. The air's too cold. They talked about me. Oh my God. God's calling us higher. God's calling us higher, church. The, the road that God is going to take us on in 2013, church, will be a road that's less traveled. You might not see a lot of people going down that road. The road God wants to take you on is a road that's less traveled. You know, the Bible speaks about narrow is the gate, the road. But wide is the road that leads to destruction. It's, it's not a road that everybody's going to travel. A lot of people just want to relive 2012 or their past. It's not what God's called us to do. In closing, you've got to know that God knows every detail of your future. Listen. He knows the test. He knows the trials. He knows the tribulations of your life. And make no mistake about it, they're purposed of God so that you can, so that you can move into and achieve your divine potential. He knows everything you're going through and everything that you're facing. And you can use that to your advantage, but you can't opt out. The biggest temptation some of you are going to have is going back over here to where it's comfortable. When God's saying, I need you over here. It's less comfortable. There's a lot more meaning. There's a lot more purpose. Remember, it's like Jesus' life. It wasn't his own. He lived to die. But then he gained everything. He's calling you this morning to die in 2013 to everything so that you can live. Maybe you don't want that. But I want it for my life. I don't just want it for my life. I want it for my family. I want it for our staff. I want it for this church. Pastor Randy wants it for this church. Stand to your feet with me. I know I've gone over. I try not to. But it's the last one of 2012, so it's okay. Is that all right? If you're here this morning, and God has spoke to you through this word, and don't just do it because everybody else is doing it, because... Whether I have one or 30 means nothing to me. It doesn't determine whether I've delivered a successful message or not. I could care less. I've just been called to deliver God's Word. But if God has spoke to you this morning, I want you to make your way down to the altar right now. God, you've got big things in store for me for 2013, God. And I'm going to go with you. That's all you're saying. God, you've got big things in store for me and my family in 2013, and I'm going to ride with you. I'm not going to drive anymore. I'm not going to do it my way. Some of you men need to get down here, too. I'm glad I'm seeing men come down. Remember, a real man is a godly man. I've learned, and it took me a while, Travis, I learned to quit talking it and start walking it, Dale. God said, you talk a good game. You've learned Christianese real well. But now I need you to start walking it. That's what God's called us to do. 
I want to decree and declare to you this morning that 2013 is going to be different. God's going to use you. Your best days and your blessed days are ahead. Every, what you do for Christ will last. And you will make a difference. And God's going to raise you up. And God's going to strengthen you. He's going to challenge you. And you're going to feel the pressure at times. And it's not going to be comfortable. And it's not going to be easy. Because His ways are not your ways. And His ways will get us where we need to be going. God's ways got Jesus. Even though it was to the cross, it got Him to where He needed to go. And He didn't opt out. So it's not always easy. We don't always understand it. But if we'll stay connected to God and not, not let anything stand in between us and our Savior in 2013, God will do the impossible. God will move mountains. And here's what's good about it. Look, at, look up here at me. You don't have to have me to help you. You don't have to have Pastor Randy to pray with you, even though that's good. If you need counsel, we'll counsel with you. But there's a counselor called the Holy Spirit. And if you'll connect with Him and let Him speak to you and lead you and guide you and direct you into truth and righteousness and holiness, God will do the impossible in your life. What the enemy meant for evil, God will turn it around for good. Come on. That's pretty extreme. Well, extreme is the enemy had planned on keeping me locked up forever, Dale and Bud. But the good news is what he meant for evil, God meant for good. There's some of us here that, this morning that you're in your own prison. That you're in your own prison. And the Bible says that today is the day of salvation. And right now is your appointed time. The biggest lie the devil will tell you, I can do this tomorrow. I can do this tomorrow. But there's a body of believers down here that they've already said, I won't. Listen, they're not perfect and neither am I. But there are people of God who have said, I want what God wants for me in 2013. And I'm going with God. I've cast my lots with the Holy Ghost crowd. But there's people down here that will surround you and pray for you. And God can save you right now and deliver you. And today is your day. And if you, need, if you need a touch this morning, don't leave this house. Don't let the devil convince you there's a tomorrow. Because tomorrow, chances are, if you're still here, you won't care anything about this. You won't be able to do anything about it. You'll, you'll know you should have, but that'll be it. So if you're here this morning and you need to be saved, or you need deliverance, we, we still do that in this church. I want you to come down right now to this altar and stand right in front of me. If you, need, if you need to be saved or if you need to be delivered from something this morning. I don't care if it's a spirit of fear. I don't care if it's anger. I don't care if it's alcohol. We won't judge you even if you smell like it. We're going to love you anyway because Jesus loves you. We just want to help catch you. Because I don't know about you, but he's still cleaning me up. So Dale and Susan and, and, and Dee and some of you guys, I want you just to find somebody right now. Dee, I want you over here with Sister Deanna. If you'll make your way and Sherry and Susan and, and Dale and, and Bud. There's more of you here that need deliverance. There's somebody here this morning that's just playing games with God. You're just here for security. This will not get you into heaven. Church won't get you into heaven. Now let's pray for these. Let's pray and intercede. If you're here this morning and you need salvation or you need deliverance, I want you to make your way down here. Come stand right here at these steps right now. Tomorrow doesn't exist. It's always today. It's always this moment. This is your moment for God to do something. God wants to make a change in 2013. 
All we have to do is make ourselves available by dying to what it is we want and what we think and what we desire and say, God, I just give it to you, God. The situations, the circumstances, God, I just give it to you, God. This chair, this chair of comfort, this is make-believe. This is superficial. This really doesn't exist. This really doesn't exist. This is where the enemy wants you. God's calling you to make a shift over here to where it's not as comfortable. God's calling you to give up some things, to change some things, to look to Him. Praise you, Father God.
blessings upon you this week, you and your family. Stay in the press, church. That might be where God's taking you. Stay in the press. Stay in the press. Let him squeeze it out of you. God's got good things in store for you.